Um, if you saw me absolutely head banging to Crash back there, you didn't. You absolutely did not. Um, so Lori did say something earlier that really um, struck a chord with me. It was just like talk, check in. And I think that's so important. And again, like I said, if you guys haven't yet, scan the QR code right behind us. Brown or if you're live streaming at home, click the donate button. There can never be enough. Um, that we're giving to mental health organizations, especially for, for kids of a young age. I remember when I was growing up in the 90s, therapy was a, a very hard word to say. Even in the 2000s, being in high school, it was just something that wasn't normalized, even just talking openly about our mental health. So it's very excited to be part of this organization tonight and, and to support a charity that's near and dear to my heart and I'm sure all of yours. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you. So scan that QR code, I said. Please. Thank you. I love you all so much. Give my entire heart. Um, all right. Next, I would like to introduce Brad Fischetti and Ella Cole. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you for coming out here to pay tribute to a beautiful soul. I consider it an unfortunate honor to be here tonight. And I'm truly humbled by the opportunity. You know, when I think about Aaron Carter, I think about this beautiful little boy with long, white, blonde hair. And he was at my brother's house one day in Orlando, and I opened the door, and uh, he greeted me with a big smile. He was so full of life. He said, hey, Brad. You want to hear my new song? Yes. And I was like, sure, buddy, I'd love to hear your new song. So he popped the tape into the boom box, pressed play, and he started dancing all around the room, singing, doing cartwheels. Amazing. The last time I saw Aaron was at the end of 2019 on the Pop 2000 tour. And it happened to be his birthday, so our agent, Matt, went out and bought him a birthday cake. And I presented, presented it to him on stage during his set. He was so happy, he just had this huge smile on his face in the entire crowd saying happy birthday to him. And although it was his birthday, he gave me a gift. He gave me a red jacket. It was the kind of jacket we wore back in like 1996 over in Germany. One guy would wear red, one guy would wear blue, one guy would wear yellow. And I had no idea why he gave it to me. I remember thinking, why are you giving me this jacket? When I got the news that we had lost Aaron, one of the first thoughts I had was, I wish I would have kept that red jacket. We got the news right before a show, and I was having a VIP experience with some of my fans. Yeah, and we, and we were sitting at lunch together, and we started talking about Aaron, and then I was overcome with grief. I put my head on the table and I just wept. And I think, I think it hit me so hard because I've experienced losing friends way too young. Talented, young, extraordinary men, way too young. Because if you know LFO, you know LFO is three. Rich Cronin. One of the greatest rappers who ever lived. Devin Lima, the kind of voice, yeah, the kind of voice that can bring you to your knees in tears. In 2010, we lost Rich after a five-year battle with leukemia. And in 2017, my bandmate and my best friend Devin, a one in a million man, was diagnosed with a one in a million cancer. And in 2018, I lost him. When Devin died, it was like the last straw. It was like somebody pulled the hood over my eyes and I went into darkness. I could find no joy in anything. I was sad, I was mad, I was completely destroyed. And one day my wife came to me and she said, Honey, you have to do something. You can't live this way. And so I had to take the first step. I went to my primary doctor, 
He gave me a questionnaire and almost immediately sent me to the psychiatrist. And then I had regular meetings with my therapist, with my pastor. And I tried to spend some time with friends and family. I tried to eat better. I tried to work out. And I made it through. But first, but first I had to be vulnerable enough to say, I have a problem. And so for any of us here or watching on the live stream, if you dwell in the darkness, be vulnerable enough to say, I need help. And if you have friends or family who are constantly down, be there for them. But remember, to help someone else, we have to be okay ourselves. Sound mind, body, soul, and spirit. I made it through. Because we have a choice sometimes, light or darkness. And sometimes we need someone to push us towards the light. To quote DMX, to live is to suffer, to survive is to find meaning in the suffering. A few weeks after Aaron passed away, I had a dream about it. It was a crazy dream. I tried to call him, even though I know he had passed. And I was crying, and when the person answered the phone, it was his security guard. And I said, oh, is that Randy? A well, Backstreet Boy security guard who's here tonight. Or Fritz, which was an insane security guard. <laughs> Later on that day, my agent called and said, hey, they're putting on this tribute show for Aaron out in LA. You want to be a part of it? And of course, I wanted to be a part of it, but I'm thinking through logistics. Okay, six kids at home, flying all the way to California from Florida. I said, let me think about it. Later on that night, I was clearing out my office because the painter was coming the next day, and I was pulling shells out of the wall and pulling nails out of the wall, and I, it worked till about 2 o'clock in the morning. And then I said, you know what, let me just check behind the door to make sure there's no more nails in the wall. And I looked behind the door, and there was the red jacket. Yeah. And so I called my agent right away. I said, I will be there. So listen, if I can ask you for five seconds of your time. If you are a prayer, I want you to pray. If you are a viber, I want you to flood the heavens with your good thoughts. I should take a moment of silence in memory of an extraordinary man in Aaron Cohen. Now, if there's one thing that Aaron and Rich and Devin love more than anything, it was to rock a show. So I think it's time to play some hits. Where's my voice, Old Town?
think I fell for the girl on TV. Wish for you a falling star. Wondering where you are. Do I ever cross your mind in the warm sunshine? She's from the city of angels like Betty Davis, James Dean, and Cable. Never know what she means to me. I fell for the girl that's on TV. Everybody knows the name. Thank you. 
Yo, guys, it wouldn't be uh, appropriate if we didn't say something about AC. When we started the Pop 2000 tour a few years ago, AC was a part of that tour. And I remember the first rehearsal we had when he started playing the keys, he was going, doo -doo 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 <laughs> and he just kept repeating this little lick, and I was like, oh, oh this is interesting. But then he started singing, and I actually haven't heard him since he was singing Candy. And I remember hearing his voice, and hearing how immensely talented he was. Woo! That man had so much talent, he came out flipping on stage. Do you remember that? He said, I'm gonna come out and start to show the backflip. I thought he was kidding. I was like, yeah, I know, I remember those days too. No, the man came out and backflip. That would be funny, and then he did it, like 10 feet off the, the drum riser. I was like, oh shit. I just wanna tell you guys something. For those of you who have kids, because a lot of our fans have now grown with us. Shout out to all the parents out there. Shout out to all the parents out there. Out there. Sometimes it's a little awkward to start talking about mental health or talk about anything for that matter with your kids because parents just don't understand, right? Will Smith? Will Smith. But it's really important that we start talking about this stuff at a young age because that's how we catch it early. And there was a lot of stuff that Aaron dealt with that we didn't catch early. And those stuff came to him. That stuff affected him at this point in his life. And now we're up here. We're singing because of him, and we're here because of him. Don't be afraid to talk to your kids about this stuff early. And let them know that drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. And it don't matter what people say on Instagram. It don't matter what people say on Instagram. You are perfect just the way you are. I mean that. I didn't tell the guys that I was going to say this. I didn't even know what I was going to say. I just want to speak from the heart because Aaron meant a lot to us. But you're perfect just the way you are. I just want to leave it there. Yeah, there's a lot we could say. That was the greatest, greatest era of having him on tour. He was so healthy and so talented. And, and Pop 2000 wouldn't be the same without him. We got to do a lot of stuff with the NSYNC boys as well. I mean, yeah, I know where this is going, with him. And uh, I understand that we're at Lance's club and everything, and yeah. like, he ain't gonna get off that easy. I mean, yeah, I think we should, um, yeah. Let's, I think we should just do it. This is for you, buddy. Let's do it. Let's get him out here. If you see it, he will come. <laughs>